Welcome to the Academy of Esports Podcast. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. I am kind of doing a special podcast today. This is the first time I've ever worked with a group this large, and we're doing this, if you're seeing the video, we're doing this in a Brady Bunch style on Zoom today, uh, where we've got seven, no, six different participants, coordinators, people who work with the El Paso Honey Badgers, and I'm going to welcome everybody. I want to welcome Fernando Monroy. Hi, um, everyone. Thank you. Mike Hi. Pitcher. Hey. Sarah Huizar. Hi. Caroline Salas. Howdy. Carol, Carla Ayala. Hi. And Andrew Clannon. What's up? All right. Again, this is a podcast, never done this before, but I met some of these people down at the TCEA conference in Austin, Texas, had some very brief conversations, uh, did some follow-up calls with Sarah and Caroline and said, you know what, we could try to do three different podcasts around all this, but I think uh, as the word got back to me, you all kind of have a hive mind, if you will. Uh, you all kind of play off each other really well. And I figure, you know, if we're going to tell the story of the El Paso Honey Badgers. Let's get as many people in here who can do this. So thank you all for being here. Of course. Oh, thank yeah. you for inviting us. Yes. So uh, not, to, not to put anybody off, but let's start at the beginning with all this. And I think uh, who wants to tell us basically what the overview is of the Honey Badgers and how did this all get started? That's totally a Mike question, I think. Mike, yeah, okay. no. All right. So, um, Mike, first, so, Mike, first introduce yourself uh, more as to what it is that you do in your role right now with the club. So, actually, currently for the student org, um, I'm actually the academic advisor um, for El Paso Honey Badgers. Um, the idea behind the Honey Badgers originally was we had just started a makerspace at the University um, and University we of El Paso University, uh, University of Texas. Texas. Yeah, University of El, El Paso, Texas. Um, and we wanted to engage college students. Um, and we had a lot of students that were coming to hang out, but they weren't the normal, your normal group of students. Um, they wanted a social club, they wanted social connection. Um, and we said, you know what, bringing in gaming, uh, video gaming, gaming clubs would be something that would be an interesting thing to introduce into the space. Mm -hmm. um, we also, at the same time, were working with an outreach program, a K through 12 outreach program called Techie. Um, and we were seeing a couple hundred kids every Friday. Um, and we were looking at ways to engage them. Um, we were talking about technology and science and a whole lot of stuff. And we said, you know, gaming and game design might be a way to um, engage them. And then we kind of had conversations around how do we grow student social skills and social emotional learning. And it kind of turned into what it is now, which is El Paso Honey Badgers, which is this student club slash esports slash community gaming uh, piece that's open to everybody um, and really works on kind of giving everybody a home to explore their interest in gaming, video gaming. So that but I think what, what really interested me and what I realized really kind of set you all apart is that while you are a collegiate organization, you're not just collegiate, are you? No, we're not. Um, actually, we do a lot, a lot of community stuff. We're open to the entire region. Actually, our name, El Paso Honey Badgers, um, came from the reason that we didn't want to take our college mascot, um, which is actually the miners, we wanted a mascot that the entire community could get behind. Um, so we didn't want a mascot that just represented our university. We wanted a mascot that could represent our community. So we actually picked a mascot um, that we didn't find in any of our high schools, middle schools, clubs, orgs. It was something that was totally different. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how Honey Badgers came about. And I love the Honey Badgers. I just want to say that. I, I love the nickname. I, I myself go, went to a college that has no other, nobody else I think uses the uh, nickname. I went to Purdue where the Boilermakers, nobody uses the Boilermakers. So I love that you were able to pick a mascot that isn't necessarily associated directly with the university. But as you said, it, it kind of lends itself to being more around the community in El Paso, right? Very much so. So how is the El Paso Honey Badgers, how are you connecting into the community in El Paso? Who would like to share? 
Okay, so the way we do that is that we do a lot of outreach. So we have a program called Techie. I don't know if we talked about it before. So it's an outreach program for kids uh, K to 12. Mm-hmm. And yearly, we see around 65,000 kids. So you could say that's a big that's a lot. outreach. Yeah, we were talking the other day and uh, between the ages of baby to 18 years, we have a reach of 25% in all El Paso, I think, mm-hmm. yeah. or something like that. So we, so we have this outreach that is huge, and we have kids that have different needs, like social skills that are lacking, or you know, or they have different interests to other kids. You were gonna say something, Mike? Well, I was gonna say when you're talking about social skills that are lacking, I think one of the biggest challenges in our areas we have K through 12 kids that don't feel like they can go to college or they they just have this lack of self esteem um and that was kind of one of the big things that we worked on is like give it a shot try mm-hmm. um and kind of gaming really helps tie into that now what i'm seeing too is obviously your team your 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 group that's here is very diverse um it's not typically what we see in esports and I think what's really important about that is that, you know, you, in your outreach work, you're trying to develop, you know, these in, interests for kids to try things, but it's really important for kids to see themselves in the people who are helping to lead all this. And that's what I, I think I really love about this. So Sarah, Caroline, and Carla, sorry to pick on you all directly, but I will for a second. Um, you, you don't see too many women involved. Well, first of all, uh, I think two of you are in engineering, right? Or is all three of you in engineering? I am not in engineering. <laughs> Caroline and me. Yeah. All right, so Caroline and Carl, you're involved in engineering. Sarah, you're involved in what major field? Um, so I have a degree in graphic design, but right now I'm in my MFA program for creative writing. Okay, so, I mean, but graphic design too. I mean, it's, it's these are usually male-dominated fields. What does this mean to you to be part of this organization and doing part of your outreach here? Caroline, you look like you want to go first. <laughs> I mean, Caroline, you're the president of the club, correct? Yes, I'm the president of the student org itself. Okay. So, uh, for me, it's a nice escape. Uh, I really rely on Honey Badgers because, like, like it's you see here, we're we're part of the leadership, and it's fifty fifty in this right now. And you can see that girls have a real strong opinion. So it's it's nice to know that there's other girls out there who feel like me. Mm-hmm. And who are, you know, I'm not alone out there. I'm not just put, cast aside or just a minority. I'm part of these, just these big round of girls who also have the same interest and same aspirations as I do. And it gives me more motivation to continue what I do. And Carla, what's your role with the club? I coordinate a lot of the meetings and to schedule and so on. I don't really play. I'm not a part of um any team specifically um but a lot of the honey badgers at the beginning um were some of my friends from classes Mm -hmm. and it really helped me understand what to talk about because sometimes when we have breaks and so on in the lounge we're like two girls Mm -hmm. so if we're not um if we don't have certain things in common with them well it's really hard for us to um grow and have a sense of community and the engineering department. So I think that helped me. So you saw this not just as something that is you're being like a student service leader, but it's also helping you personally as well too, I guess. Yeah. And Sarah, you're the first person I think I met from the Honey Badgers. You are you are right in my face. You are like, let's talk about stuff. So what is your role with the Honey Badgers? I think that was Carla. Carla met you first, and then really, um, yeah, me and Fernando went to go like say hi and and stuff. But oh, um, sorry, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So um, my role on the team is I also help organize a lot of the meetings. Um, I am the primary designer for the team, so we do work with a company in the UK called Raven GG. Um, they they developed these, well, we we kind of co-developed the cool jerseys that we have. And right now I'm working with them to make some other cool products for us. Um, 
in the team, I, I guess I'm part of the Hearthstone team, so I'm co-captain of that team. I was um, captain of that team, but, you know, there's a lot of other things on my plate, so there is now another captain. Um, yeah, I see myself kind of like the, like, let's do this stuff kind of thing. Like, I, I just, I get super, super excited about what we're doing. Um, gaming has been a part of my life, my entire life. Um, and I have one older brother, no other siblings, but he's the main reason that I got into gaming. So again, it's been part of my life forever. And strangely enough, I, I haven't, I guess it wasn't until recently um, that I understood like, oh, I'm a girl in gaming. I've always just seen myself as the person who plays video games. Um, yeah, I, I think bringing gender into it is really interesting, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm just a cool honey badger player, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Well, I hope that's where we're kind of moving towards. I mean, as, as more and more, as, we, as we're doing more and more of these interviews, as I'm doing more and more of these interviews, I'm starting to see that while there are a lot of stereotypes around gaming, you know, again, that we're all white males or Asian males and we're, we're playing these video games in our bedrooms or our basements. I hope as, as we start to tell these stories, as you're sharing your stories, that people are opening their eyes to, again, that this is, this is just as diverse as our world. I mean, the, the, the cross-section of people playing games is, is very broad in all this here. So again, having you all part of this story, and, and again, kind of doing this all in this new format today that I haven't done before, is kind of, I hope, eye-opening to a lot of people that these organizations uh, can be very diverse. And not just focus, because I think right now, especially with uh, the COVID-19 outbreaks and we're all in our homes, there seems to be this, this a lot of attention being paid to the professional levels, but it's really, to, my, to me, the beauty of all this is really in, in the work that we're doing at the collegiate level and at the, at the K-12 level, too, as well. So with, with that said, Andrew, what is your role here with the team? All right, so uh, I manage the social media accounts that we have. You know, nowadays, I feel like it's pretty important to keep your audience interactive, you know, keep talking to people, make sure that in case of a pandemic that people aren't panicking and they have all of their information, you know, that's just like a really good example of why it's important to have, you know, an interactive social media. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> uh, the other thing that I do is I'm the team captain of our Apex Legends team. And uh, managing that is pretty fun, hanging out with people who are interested in the same games as I am, and then actually going and organizing tournaments that, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't win, but it's still really fun, like, because you don't really see a lot of that at the collegiate level. Mm -hmm. You'll hear, like, a kid on Fortnite winning $2 million or $14 million, I think it was. I think it was, I think it was three. Or three? Okay. <laughs> I think it was three. <laughs> anyway, two, it was, two or 13 million, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of money yeah and you don't really hear about like the battle fight tournaments where you can win i don't know 250 dollars for winning a tournament you know like mm -hmm. that's that's still pretty cool to me you know so with with looking at your different roles sarah and andrew are you the only ones who are actively playing or captaining the games or are all of you playing the games i know carl you said you're not playing any games right no, I actively play too. I'm the captain of the StarCraft 2 team. And so, yeah, I usually play a lot of StarCraft 2 and I'm totally interested in that. But I also play on the Call of Duty mobile team. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Fernando? Uh, I am the former captain of the League of Legends teams. But since I started like doing other stuff, I passed it to another student because I thought that it would be better for a student mm -hmm. to be the the captain so he can engage better the students he has uh more he will gain more experience that we help him resume and all that uh so i i still play league of legends i play tft a lot i am the one who taught mike how to play tft <laughs> <laughs> also he, he's doing better now <laughs> and that's a game i've never jumped into uh there's a lot of games you know uh, let me tell you something and maybe this is something that can kind of lead into the next question um how do you, especially when we're talking about kids and we're talking about games that are complex like League of Legends, for example, because there's so many different layers of that. 
<laughs> how do you all work together to maybe teach some of these things? Because again, your club is very different than other collegiate clubs. You don't operate in a silo. You're more, I see what you're doing is more of like a European soccer club model um, where the, the European soccer clubs have, you know, they're under 17, under 18, under 19s, you know, and it goes all the way up to the professional level club. So how are you, I guess, doing your outreach? You said you've reached 65,000 kids in the El Paso area. How are you, I guess, in a big picture, but also maybe some examples, how are you doing this outreach to maybe reach these teams and these kids in the community around esports? That's open for anybody. <laughs> That's a good question. I think we barely started to implement it in the K-12 to uh, system, right? Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is for kids that are younger, since these games are a little bit too complex, uh, we started with basic games so that they can see how you can compete, you can teamwork, uh, you have you learn all those skills that later on with more uh, difficult games, they're going to be very useful. For example, in League of Legends, that you require a lot of communication, coordination in a team, uh, you need leadership, you, you need someone to take the charge. So we try to teach these basic concepts first to kids that are younger. And then many of the high school students that we have approached and talked to in the different districts, they all they have already started playing. So we haven't, at least for what I've seen, we haven't had the opportunity to teach a kid one of these games, for example, mm -hmm. League of Legends. Mm -hmm. But I had the experience of teaching with my brother-in-law who helped me uh, to teach some librarians in one of the districts. There were 12 or 15 librarians, and we teach them the basics of League of Legends so they can start incorporating it into their programs in, at school. That is, that is no small task. I work with librarians <laughs> in my school district. I over So part of my role in my school district is I oversee all the libraries as well as our digital and virtual learning programs. And uh, yes, I can, uh, that's, I, I think that's a, that's a really powerful statement that you just made because again, a lot of these people think that, oh, older generation or people who are over 18 or whatever are not going to be as interested in this. But, you know, as you alluded to, you taught Mike how to play TFT, um, you know, um, teaching librarians, you know, because libraries to me is going to be a space that in the very near future, if it hasn't been done so already in a lot of communities, the libraries are going to be a space where kids are going to be able to come and access these games and play these games and have these clubs set up. Are you all seeing that as well, too, in the El Paso area? Yeah, actually, we've been working with a couple of districts here to help their librarians um, understand the games. But um, also, I think we're kind of helping facilitate some of the interactions because sometimes districts are focused on their district and we're really kind of like, hey, if District A is doing this and District B is doing that, we can kind of as a city do this. And so we've actually worked with the different schools to come up with a game of five or six games um, that they can all play across all the districts. And I think that's really helped because for hardware, for software, for um, interconnectability, um, I, I think that's one. And the other thing I think is really meeting the kids at what they want to play. Um, same thing at Honey Badgers. Like we started with, I don't know, five, six, seven. Now we've got 32, 33 different teams on different games. We now have Dungeons and Dragons and board games. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say 32 or 33 different games in your organization? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the thing is, is we're open to add a new game as long as we have students that want to play it and we have a student that's willing to step up and take ownership of the team and lead it. Um, again, because we really built around the development and the skills and the social emotional learning. You know, if somebody wants to say, we want to start a game on, like we have Call of Duty, Call of Duty Zombies, Call of, I mean, or Overwatch. Dead Ops Arcade. Dreams, or, yeah, I mean, we, we now we have a huge Dungeons and Dragons and it's, it's actual game games. And we now have a gaming club that wants to join us that play nothing but board games. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's a little bit of, a mix of everything, but I think that's what we're trying to instill in the kids also is, you know, bring what you like, what you're good at, what you want to learn, even if it's just casual, bring it and let's, there's a place for it. Well, Carla and Andrew, I guess this question then goes to you. How do you coordinate 
and and get the word out about 32 or 33 different games well kind of well kind of exactly how you met uh carlo or sarah it so- honestly sounds like both of them that you could have met <laughs> you just gotta walk up and just talk to people about like what we have going on mm-hmm. and there's already a general interest in it like people people love video games well most people i don't want to say everybody but oh, let's say a good portion of the popular a yeah, significant a of, portion of the population a lot of people oh, like hold on i got i want to stop on that one because carla i'm not going to let you off the hook on this one okay <laughs> are there any games that you play you, you must Mario have something Kart. on there you go okay good all right sorry <laughs> i had to make sure that there was so would there could there be a carla led mario kart team oh i am <laughs> terrible at video games i try so am i fernando so, tried to teach me league. <laughs> i my parents everyone i just i don't have the coordination <laughs> but that's not stopping you from being part of the organization yeah it's not <laughs> and, and so sorry back andrew I, i'm sorry i had to stop you but again just i wanted to make sure that we that uh again with carla part of this um that it sounds like it you know it sounds like a lot of work to get the word out but it also sounds like it's not in some ways again you just got to be outgoing or yeah what? it's it, it it's a lot of work because a lot of people have questions mm-hmm. and like especially with social media it's kind of hard to centralize everything like there's facebook twitter instagram tiktok like all of these different social medias and it's just like everybody's coming in at once. We have a totally different person to manage just our discord server. Uh, Cause that's like a whole other like universe to me. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I hate like, discord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's a necess- <laughs> but it's a necessary evil that I have to jump into, but I, yeah, exactly. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to use it a lot. So I'm starting to get more into it, but I'd rather just let that other guy deal with it. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, or we think that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he does. Maybe, either he's way, he's active on there every day, <laughs> telling people good morning and making sure that, especially with Animal Crossing now, there um, everybody's playing it now, and we have uh, a new channel for Animal Crossing. So oh, yeah. he's he's super involved with our Discord. I, I have to say that uh, definitely, while I'm not a fan of Discord myself, it's been a pretty powerful tool right now with the closures that we've had. Have you, have you all seen that as well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, for, I know. And maybe Mike, it seems that these kids, I'm going to call you all kids, even though you're grown adults, uh, <laughs> these young people uh, seem to really care about you. And, and it's like, w- do you feel like you would have had this connection with Mike had there not been the, the esports experience, whether it's the club or the casual kind of play? I mean, when you talk about Mike, you talk about him in a, in a way that's more than just a teacher, just somebody who's running a lab on campus. I think and- even before all of this, um, Mike is definitely the kind of, I guess, manager or boss, however you want to say that, um, is never, you know, never makes you feel like he is your boss, per se. I mean, we all think of each other I guess as colleagues, no, no matter what position you're in, I think that's one of the strong suits of our organization too, is like when you ask us, what is it specifically that you do? Um, it's like, well, we all dip our toes into a little bit of everything and we all help each other with everything. So even though we do have, I guess when it comes to our roles, um, we kind of respect each other's natural flow to like do something that we might be more apt to do. Um, like, obviously, maybe Carla's not going to be the designer for the team, right? Because mm-hmm. I have, you know, design experience, things like that. Um, but taking it back to Mike, I think this dynamic was always present, even without Honey Badgers. Um, so it just seems like something super natural that we that we started. I mean, especially like with the makerspace. Um that was a a huge shift for a lot of people. Um, Mm -hmm. But because there is no like power trips and all of those, you know, things that people might make you feel, it just feels very natural. And and Mike, you're no scrub yourself. I mean, Apple distinguished (laughs) educator, you've got some really good credentials behind you. How much work has this been for you? Let's call it work. I mean, do you feel like 
do you feel like you have to be in here every day and micromanaging or is it like you you trust them enough to really take the reins on this Oh no, they they've definitely taken the reins. I mean, they <laughs> they just come and get me when they need help or if they need to go <laughs> Mike to go do his mic thing as Sarah puts it. Um yes. <laughs> no, no, I I think great like Carla's being really she hasn't said a lot, but like she manages hundreds of events that are going on concurrently really? and scheduling and making sure that people are here and there and that we've got stuff going on. Caroline's totally got the student org management and constitution and and membership and whatever um, on control. Andrew's like totally rocking the social media front and the connecting people and the, hey, this is how we stream. Sarah's got the design, you know, and then it's really about connecting. Um, and I, I think that's the big thing is everybody's taking their strengths. Like Fernando was talking about going out and teaching teachers and librarians how to play this. I, I think we play really well together as a team. Everybody takes their strengths, goes and does it, mm. and then come back. And like, we're always in communication. I think even during quarantine and all the stuff that's going on, two, three, four times, even the tax, and the Facebook and the this and the that and the whatever uh, of like what's going on and where are kids at and I mean it, it's a constant conversation but it, it's a lot of fun and, and that's a great thing to hear and, and you know it's funny as you just went through everybody well it's not I shouldn't say funny but as you were going through everybody all I'm thinking in my mind is boy I've got some scholar gamers I would love to just put in contact with some of the each each one of you and different different kids uh, of mine. And I can imagine that, again, as you're thinking about growing this out, as you're thinking about building this out, these are valuable connections, too, that kids can make. I mean, what's the community of El Paso like? There's, I mean, we hear about it. It's El Paso, Texas. It's right on the border with Mexico, I believe. Uh, southwest end of the state. Am I right? Yep. And, Four tip. Yep. And like so, never eat sour watermelons. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, what what is how how vital is it to i guess connect into the community of el paso i mean again um one of the issues that we have with esports of course by stereotype is that it is very male dominated very white and and and, and asian male dominated by stereotype but what about what about being in el paso and and using esports to open doors for kids to gain access to you know whether it's a connection that they need the play that they need or even thinking about things collegiately because i i imagine that many of you are bilingual i know that i've got a lot of students who also are spanish speaking um by by native speaking i mean um how important has that all been to kind of like growing esports in the el paso and, and utep uh, area um, I think, so we are a very big city, but a lot of times you hear that we're a big city with like a small town feel. And I think because if you, if you interview another group of people who work together, you'll probably find that they have the same dynamic as we do. Um, we just, oh, I, I don't, I, I think you all are very unique and I don't, I think you have something very special. Just don't, don't, don't rest on that. But I think that I think you have to, so please go on sorry yeah so i mean if, if you were to interview another group from el paso you would oh. find that they yeah you would find that they might have the same dynamic um and i'm taken back to something that a woman told me at tca is that um i think she she works in dallas she was telling me that there's students you know like fifth graders third graders who don't necessarily speak the same language but the video game portion is a universal language. And I think um, that kind of happens here too. I mean, we all, the majority of us do speak Spanish, mm -hmm. um, but even if social skills are, you know, are, even though we have a range of social skills or a range of interests, if you have that interest in video games, you're gonna be speaking the same language more than likely. So yeah. And so I guess, um, what is the future for uh, the El Paso Honey Badgers? What, what are the big plans? Carla, you must, have, you must have everything down, right? You've got everything planned out for, for the next several months, years down the road. What, what does the future hold for El Paso Honey Badgers right now? 
I think we're trying to get more um, schools and teachers on board right now. Mm -hmm. um, what I sense is that it's kind of hard to get parents to see video games as something good mm -hmm. and as a tool to grow in like team teamwork and leadership and so on because it's not a regular sport a lot of people at least i feel like here um we have a lot of mexican parents mm -hmm. who are old-fashioned and have certain stereotypes and certain rules mm -hmm. so for sure um i think that's where we're trying to go right now for classes especially in quarantine trying to show that video games is a sense um, of community to try to um still do the same basic things instead of going outside and playing with kids you can be on a computer and still grow mm -hmm. so for right now i think that's where we're going i don't know if we have any other plans um, a lot of our plans kind of shifted recently, so it's well, hard to tell. Yeah, and, and I mean, but it, it's good, too, to also realize that um, we are going to get out of this eventually. And I do I do get that part about parents. That parent outreach part is probably, it's amazing how many kids I have in my program. So we've got about 200 and something kids in our program and five different high schools. And for some parents, the first time, that they see their child playing in a competitive video game, whether we play Overwatch, League of Legends, Rocket League, and Smash Brothers. The first time that they see that, for some of them, it's a shock. Not only because they're like, oh my gosh, they have a uniform and they go to practice and all that, but also they don't realize just how exciting all of this is. This, these events have the excitement of your traditional basketball game, your traditional football game, whatever. But what's different is, is that you don't have to have necessarily the physical abilities of a high-end athlete or even a you know somebody who can run or or hit or whatever you don't have to again as you were saying speak the same language even in order to be on a team together or uh, have the same uh, cognitive abilities uh, whether it's a uh, special education or 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 what but um i i really feel like when parents see it for the first time and they get it it's like the light switch goes on and they're like, they all of a sudden become your biggest supporters because you're giving their kids something that is so makes them proud, I guess. Is that, would that be a right, would that be fair to say? I mean, how many of your parents, well, let's, let's, let's ask this question. Cause, because Mike and I, we, we, we get a pass. We don't have to explain it to anybody. <laughs> right. How do you explain to your parents? Um, what esports is and what it means to you. I mean, they must be looking like, what, what, you have a jersey and what are you, you're spending how much time playing StarCraft II? And how do you explain, Caroline, you're laughing the hardest. So we'll start with you. How do you, since you're the president, how do you explain to your parents, yeah, I have StarCraft II practice. I can't, I'll get to the other stuff later. So lucky for me, I I am not from El Paso area. So I moved, I live in the dorms. So I don't have to like tell them my every move. However, when um, I grew up with my older brother being a very big video game gamer and my parents were very, they loved it, but they were also not too fond of it because it was, my brother was spending more time playing video games than making friends, or at least in their opinion. Mm -hmm. And so when I came, when I came home and I was like, okay, by the way, I joined an esports team. I think they were like, really? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? And um, so I explained to them that this is um, this is an organization where I can, I'm learning to play video games. I'm interacting with people who play different video games and I'm just really learning how to adapt and how to overcome. And it really gets off my competitive edge, which we, I told they know, and I know that I have a really bad, I have really bad competitive edge. So it, it really gave me a- like, You mean you have a good competitive edge. <laughs> A good competitive edge, which uh, can sometimes be uh, very obnoxious, I like to say. Um, but I think they were very skepti skeptical at first because it was just like they thought I was going to go down the same route that my brother did, playing video games all the time, that being just another, being just another person sitting behind a computer 
doing nothing but playing video games, losing that social interaction. Mm. I had to explain to them that this is an organization. There's a bunch of people. Like, it's more than just, I have to plan a game. Like, we have to practice. We have to go and come up with new um, plays and how we're going to how we're going to beat the next team. And, you know, even at our first, uh, our first tournament, our first StarCraft tournament, we came up with a chant and we have inside jokes from that chant. Sarah will remember um, somebody I used to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be on the StarCraft team, but not anymore. Well, but that's, that, that, that's a great thing too, because you did shift over to Hearthstone, you said. So you've, you've shifted games even in, in the organization. Yeah, yeah, I've always been uh, playing Hearthstone, but they needed a filler and I was like, Caroline, I'll do it. I'll do it. So well, she got me into the game. Her and uh, another oh, one of our true. team members, they were the ones who got me into StarCraft. I didn't play StarCraft originally. And um, Fernando, it sounded like you've been playing League of Legends for quite some time because you're, you're teaching everybody. You're the captain. How did you explain to your parents, oh, by the way? Well, you, you can probably tell by my accent that I'm not from here. Mm -hmm. So I was born and raised in Chihuahua, Mexico, which is it's uh, around four hours from El Paso, and I started to get into, so I had two older brothers, with, well, a brother and a sister, and they have always been into gaming, but just like casual, you know, like playing an hour on the weekends because my parents didn't allow us to play more and stuff like that, because they're very like conservative in that uh, side, because they, so it was interesting. When I got into high school, that's when I started playing League of Legends, and I remember having two friends that used to talk about it like all day and i would be like why are you talking about it like oh such nerds you know <laughs> and then we all are <laughs> <laughs> and one day i was like you know what like i'm gonna give it a try and like six years later i'm still giving it a try <laughs> but it was it was interesting going back to your question um i remember taking it took me years to explain to my mom that i cannot pause the game that um that once I get into like League of Legends, I cannot pause it. Yeah. So, like, so it's gonna be like thirty minutes that I am gonna have to be like full in the game. And they used to be not a lot into like oh, but if kids play games, they're gonna they're not gonna be outside exercising or playing a sport and stuff like that. And with the passing of the years, I like constantly explain them. And later on, that they are seeing that it's now part of my job doing this stuff. Uh, I explained to them that the kids that usually are playing are not the kids that are going to be like excited about going out and playing soccer or basketball. So they're not going to play those sports uh, regardless whether gaming exists or not because they, ju they just don't enjoy it. So why not give them the skills that you require in a normal sports, quote unquote, mm. it's leadership, uh, discipline, uh, you know, like teamwork, all those skills that you learn in a quote unquote again a normal sport that you learn them that you can learn them through gaming that the kids are learning all these skills and getting to know each other and creating a sense of community through gaming that it's not just like to play games so they, they i feel like they have started to get the grasp of that concept it's only taken six years yeah it took them <laughs> six years <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's an ongoing, it's changing a mentality of many, many, many years. So I think in that regards, six years out of the 61 that my father has to change that mentality, I don't think actually it's a lot, you know, like if you put it into perspective, it's not that long. Have you ever thought of just sitting your dad down and trying to teach him League of Legends? Yes, <laughs> but no, it's not. I mean, right. does your dad, does your dad, I mean, because the way I describe League of Legends to people is I say it's, it's five on five live action chess. Mm -hmm. Is your, I mean, does your dad play, watch other sports, ever play sports, anything like that? Or, I mean, I'm just trying to think of ways that you can maybe, one of the things that I know that a lot of my scholar gamers have talked about is they want to teach adults how to play the games that they play. They want to sit them down and teach. Like I, I asked them once, this is the biggest response I ever got from the group of kids. Hey, would you be interested in teaching a group of senior citizens how to play Overwatch? Just on, just, just to kind of pull the room and see what it is. The response was like, Oh my gosh, we would love to teach senior citizens how to play Overwatch. You know? So is there anything that you're doing maybe in that regards? 
Uh, yeah, actually, my parents, I, I no longer live with them. I live in El Paso. Mm -hmm. But whenever I go uh, to visit them, every now and then I play a little bit. And uh, sometimes they go into my room and they sit with me and see the game and watch it. So they're watching it and I'm explaining while we're playing. I usually lose whenever I'm doing that. Because <laughs> you're distracted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it's interesting that now I see that they have gained that interest in learning what I'm doing. That it's just not like, oh, you know, like, oh, it's team clicking and doing stuff. It's like, so I, I they see that I'm planning the stuff. Like, uh, I'm talking with my brother-in-law because I also got him into League of Legends a few years ago. And so we talk to each other and we're like, okay, so you do these, you do that. Uh, so we're coordinating and they were like, oh, that's interesting. It's just not like clicking and doing stuff. like. You know, so they okay. see and, and watch it, and they're like surprised. They they don't want to learn it, but they are. But they have learned the concepts of how what what skills you're gaining, not just clicking stuff. You know, they see so, that there's actual. You have actual strategy. That there's actual planning. That there's actual thought that goes into this. Sarah and Andrew and, and Carla, have you had to have any? interesting conversations with your parents to kind of say like, Hey, this is what I do. This is how I'm doing. Have, have you had to do, I mean, Carla, you said you, you're, you're not really much of a gamer. So I don't know if you've had to have that tough conversation other than your parents may be saying to you or Andrew, Andrew, you're playing apex. Um, hey, I sent you to college to get an engineering degree, not run an esports program. Right. Or, or something along those lines. Have you, have you ever had any of those kind of instances? Um, yeah, for me, my dad has always been the type, like, school comes first, school comes first, like, no matter what, but I'm, I'm a senior in school, and I've been doing this for, like, a few years already, and I think he knows that I'm on top of everything that I do, all of my assignments, my schoolwork, he knows that I know that school comes first, but this is what I do with my free time, you know, like, he understands, well, I think he, he knows it's, like, an esports team that I play, and I compete, and I help out with the organization, but I don't really think he knows what that entails. So he's just kind of like, eh, you know, he's like, he's in school, he's doing good. He knows what his priorities are. Like, I trust him. Has this, has this been something, cause I know for me, uh, when I went to Purdue University, the marching band, believe it or not, was the thing that kept me in college. I think in a lot of ways has, has this being part of this not necessarily kept you in college, but has it made your college experience that much more meaningful to you? Uh, me personally, I, I believe yes, because um, so like the first three years of college, like I never I didn't talk to anybody like I'm, I'm a computer science major. So every everybody was kind of like closed off. They're in their zone. They don't really. Um, collaborate as much mm -hmm. but then uh we started the honey badgers and now that there's there's like always a bunch of people in gaia and these like they're gamers but they're like the most friendly peaceful people that you could come in contact with so it's very easy to like open up and get to know them so for me that's like i i enjoy coming to the makerspace or to school you know it makes it more pleasant would any of you have known each other if it weren't for the honey badgers? Yeah. No. <laughs> I actually came into working there after I joined the honey badgers and after Sarah was like, hey, check this game out. You're this is kind of thing you'll be interested in. But I used to just kind of it used to be just an area I would go and study at, but it wasn't like somewhere I was really involved in until someone was like, hey, check this game out. And I did. And then I started interacting. And now I'm, I say I'm pretty close with them. <laughs> so so none of you knew each other before? Honey Badgers? No, we well, did. I, I knew did. Carla, Fernando, Sarah, and Mike before. We were all we, working. Together. We worked together. Um, this is just like another edition of, of work that we have. Okay. All right. But I think being a part of the Honey Badgers has definitely um, helped us get to know each other. Because if not, yeah. I wouldn't have really talked to Sarah and gone on a trip and gotten to know her. She would have <laughs> been a co-worker that I see on Monday at 8 for an hour and that's it. Gotcha. So we have definitely gotten to know each other. Well, I and I think because 
but sorry i think because of the honey badgers um specifically with carla we've been able to do other things so we also help run um, a grant together and i don't think we would have been in that position that we have now if, if it weren't for honey badgers it sounds like uh this is definitely i guess accentuated your collegiate experience and has made your collegiate experience that much greater and hopefully you know the work that you are all doing mike you included of course as well with all this i hope that this is um the start of what becomes a model that other schools are going to use again as, as especially as you start to trickle down uh, hopefully into the high school and middle school ranks that this becomes kind of the model for colleges to to partner with i guess the community with schools that it isn't just something that sits in a silo um, before we sign off on the interview today, is there anything any of you, and we've got some good time still, so is there anything that you all want to share? Mm. Everybody can share something. I guess on a personal note, since we we're talking about enriching college experiences, sure. Um, and then going back to your question about the parents, mm -hmm. um, like I said, gaming has been a part of my life, my entire family's life. Um, so since the beginning of college, I knew that I wanted to be involved in the gaming industry in some way, um, whether that's a designer or whatnot. Right now, my goal is to write for video games, hence why I'm in the creative writing department. But I think that having the Honey Badgers come to fruition is not only like a personal dream come true, but also a dream come true in like a career wise, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, when Mike came to me and was like, Hey, I have this idea. And then he told me his idea. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yes. Like, are you kidding me? Like, this is insane. Like how, how much better of an experience can I have in college? You know, like this is it, like, this is what's happening now. So it's been such a privilege to work with everybody and, just such an awesome awesome time i know that this is work but it genuinely doesn't feel like it a lot of the time because it doesn't I seem like what you all are doing is work yeah we're all like super passionate about what we're doing um and i feel like we all have each other's back yesterday we no on what was it on thursday we were supposed to have somebody streaming and then they weren't able to do it and we were like okay what are we going to do we're trying to find solutions and we ended up um, streaming, you know, some other game and it worked out and people were in the chat and we had a fellow honey badger who doesn't work. She's just in the organization. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, can you be our moderator for like an hour? And she's like, yeah, I'm on it. And she got on online and that's just how we work. We all have each other's back. We're here for each other. It is, you know, gaming is our medium but i like to say we are so much more than a gaming club than an esports club um people again on discord say good morning and good night to each other every single day um, we check in with each other almost every single day so yeah it really is just a dream come true for me at least sounds like you have a really good community there mike yeah we do it, it's actually <laughs> really amazing to have seen where we were what a little like a year and a half, two years ago to this has just been a crazy ride. Um, I'm not sure we know where we're going, but you know, we're, we're going to keep <laughs> going left and right and forward and straight all at the same time and, and see where we end up. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like I, I have to say my, my biggest craziest two takeaways from all this is one um, that email or the shout out that came from the high school student that's in Vegas that was like, Hey, I'm coming to your college. I want to be part of your group. And we're like, no, this is just spam email. Like, they, they gotta be kidding. It. And then we looked this kid up, and then he's actually this kid that has a video game club. So I have to say, shout out to him. But um, I, I think the other thing on Discord, even though I'm not a Discord dude, mm. um, was really one of the conversations that took place um, early on, which was a group of kids that were like, Oh, you know, I want to go get pizza. No, no, I want to go get pizza too. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go to Peter Piper. And they actually made this like date, if you will, to go to Peter Piper to get pizza together. And you read the whole 
conversation that took place on Discord, and it was like, oh my gosh, like, I, for me, that was the point where I was like, wow, we kind of started something that we had thought about, but that wasn't really the intention mm -hmm. of, you know, here are kids that don't really feel comfortable going to Peter Piper to get pizza and asking, giving each other a call and saying, hey, we're going to Peter Piper, and then there's this whole conversation on Discord, like, no, that was so awesome. I love you. We should do that again. You know, and I'm like, wow, like, you know, so, so yeah, I, I think it, it's been a great ride. It's a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like work. Um, and that that's kind of what I definitely say is teachers try it. Um, you know, what's the worst you're going to do? Anybody else have anything else you want to share? I do want to say that I, uh, next time you are ordering Honey Badger's jerseys, I am requesting to be put in on the order. I will pay for the shipping and whatever <laughs> I need, but I would like some Honey Badger's gear to wear around Racine, Wisconsin, so people just start asking questions about it. So, You're very lucky because we are actually receiving the shipment already. Oh, you're um, receiving, but um, you already ordered. Yeah, but we have extras, so it, specifically for cases like this. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Uh, anybody else? Where yeah, I, I want to add one more thing. Sure. And I, I think this is a key of why we have been uh, successful with the project that we're working at Sony Badgers, is that we let things run. We let the kids take control of what they want to do, the, what they like. As you can see in the inter in the interview today, Mike is not like trying to jump on everything and commenting on everything. He just let us like talk and talk and talk and do what we like. And that's what we also do with the different groups. Uh, we let the kids run what they want to do. For example, with League of Legends, once I step out of being the team lead, uh, I let him run it the way he, he likes to do it because that's what he's passionate. And if I try to push my ideas or uh, if Mike pushes his ideas into us, then you wouldn't be doing what you really love you would mm -hmm. be doing what someone else loves. So I think that's that's one of the things that I that I have liked that has made our lives easier by running this program is that we let things run. We let the kids run and we just stand in the back pushing the cart, but there's a lot of people pushing the cart with us. So it's not hard to do it. That's a, what that's what I think it's has been pretty easy to do. This is this has all been really fantastic today. Again, last words. Any last words? That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> last uh, final opportunity. That, that's not a good joke right now. <laughs> I know. Like, you know. <laughs> Let's see how red my face can get. <laughs> any final thoughts? Um. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that I'm really grateful for the Honey Badgers because I've built a lot of relationships, like saying I'm not from El Paso. So having the Honey Badgers kind of gave me a place to go escape from school and especially being getting really homesick and getting like, I want to go home. I don't want to be here. I don't have anyone to go to. The Honey Badgers gave me a place and it also built a relationship with my brother that I didn't really have before. Like we were just kind of oh, like, wow. two, we were kind of apart from each other. We're kind of very different people. But now, like, my brother and I, will, he'll, we'll send each other news about what's coming on League of Legends or what's going on with, like, the Nintendo Switch. Or uh, we, we've been talking about Animal Crossing nonstop recently. And that's something I would have never had if it wasn't for Honey Badgers. That's amazing. That's great. Carla or Andrew, any final thoughts? Uh, thank you for having us. We appreciate it so much for you uh, letting us get our story out there and uh, also like get more information about us out there. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we do, thank you. Yes. So, so Andrew, being the social media manager, where can people find out more about the El Paso Honey Badgers? That's a good one. I, let me pull up the exact handle so that way uh, there's no mistake. So you can follow us on Twitter, it's EP underscore Honey Badgers. You can follow us on Instagram. I believe it's the exact same, Facebook. It's EP Honey Badgers. Yeah. No underscore. No underscore. No underscore for Instagram. Together. Yeah, and then on Facebook, it's uh, capital E, capital P, space, Honey Badgers. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Fernando, Mike, Sarah, Caroline, Carla, and Andrew, thank you so much for being on the Academy of Esports podcast. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture. 
diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N and through the Academy of Esports account at T-A-O Esports. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash TAO Esports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week. <laughs>